we live in the modern world, sustain and advance through the successful completion of projects. That quote by, uh, was said by uh, Jean Piaget. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. For me, it's an honor to be here and being a part of these kind of activities. My name is Wilmer Dumikinga. People usually call me Walter William Washington, but if you call me Will, for me, it's perfect. Uh, what we're doing today is talking about project-based learning, basically this. But before we start, we have something that I would like you to help me with. I'm going to show you a set of different questions, and the only thing that you have to do is to read it. You have uh, a couple of seconds, and then we are going to start voting. Okay, so let me know, my dear Jimena, if you are ready. I am ready to shoot question number one. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Question number one. Here we go. Okay, question number one says, have you ever heard about project-based learning? All right, so now you have the option to vote. We have 60%, 40%. We have uh, 15 more seconds, and then um, we are going to present the results. All right, please keep voting. Okay, let's see. It's half and a half, as you can see. Okay, now you have only 20 seconds left. <laughs> so, and also uh, what I can see so far is we have Oh my goodness, 250 uh, teachers who have joined to this training session, which is really good. Thank you for coming and welcome. Okay, we have three, two, one. All right, we are going to stop with a question number one. Well, the results, basically, uh, the 44% says that yes, they have ever heard about PVL. On the other hand, we have a 56% uh, that says uh, no. Okay, well, that's okay. That's why we are here, in order to learn something about this. Okay, please, Jimena, help me with uh, question number two, please. Here we go. Okay, thank you so much. We have one more minute in order to uh, answer this question. Have your schools used project-based learning? That is a simple question. It could be really simple. It can be uh, sometimes tricky, but we'll see the results. We have 40 seconds left. Okay, wow, we have 50-50% uh, <laughs> and there's only 20 seconds left, yeah. Okay, uh, just in case, my dear teachers, uh, as soon as we finish this training session, we, be, uh, we will be able to answer all of the questions that you have. Uh, for now, just please write on the chat room and then we'll see uh, how we are going to answer your questions. Okay, so please, my dear Jimena, stop with the voting. And the results, as you can see, uh, and this question is 53% that says, yes, the schools have been working with project-based learning. And on the other hand, the 48% uh, that says no. Okay, now let's try it with the number three, please. Remember that now we go with a set of three questions. All right, good. Oh, by the way, thank you. Is that okay if you show me? <laughs> The, the question, Here we go. Please. Teachers, we need to scroll down to see question three. Exactly. So we have question one. At what scale has project-based learning typically taken place at your school? Choose one of these options. Individual classroom, multiple classroom, whole school. Now question number two, take a minute in order to read. That says uh, project-based learning is effective for. We have five different options, All right? Is that okay if you, uh, if you help me by scrolling down, my dear Jimena, please? I have. Maybe you need, each one needs to do it individually. I don't know. I have yeah, scrolled okay. down. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay, no worries. That's okay. Because I see answers coming in for the three questions. Yeah, exactly. 
Thank you. Well, that's okay. And the last question, which is number five, says, well, in your opinion, what do you think are the barriers uh, why schools are not working with PVL projects? I mean, PV uh, project-based learning. Okay, we have 10 more seconds, and then we are done with this voting. All right. Okay. And then I'll show you the results. I will see two, one. Okay, my dear Jimena, please stop. Okay. I would like to say thank you for every single person who is helping with the answers. And as you can see, uh, they are, uh, teacher says that in a 43%, uh, they are working with individual projects in the classroom, sometimes in multiple classrooms, I mean in different classes. And the 26% says the whole school. Now in question number four, basically we have that project-based learning is effective for uh -huh. We have a split of decision here. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, as you can see, we have engaging students uh, with a 26%, stimulating critical thinking, which is a 30%, and the last thing, students' collaboration. Wow, which is a really good thing to know. Okay, and the last question, my dear Jimena, please, if you help me. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I can do it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can do it too. Yeah. All right, so in the last question is, what is the main barrier? Do you consider is the one that uh, is not allowing schools or teachers to work with this kind of uh, approach? And as you can see, we have the 42%, the lack of time. Yeah, you know, as teachers, we have to do lots of different things, right? Not only at the school, but also at homes in order to try to do planning and try to figure out how to solve the students' uh, uh, issues and so on. Well, the 20% says that is a competition with curriculum, uh, difficulty with assessment with a 12%. And as you can see, the 90% says the classroom management challenges. Well, okay, thank you so much. We're going to, uh, to stop working with this activity. So, and I can see so far is that some of you have been working with this kind of approach. Uh, and for the ones who have no idea about what it's all about, don't worry, everything will be covered today. So thank you so much, my dear Jimena. We are going to close the voting, right? Okay, as you can see now on your screen, we have the five different questions. Well, let's get us started. Oh, oh my. Okay, so I have a question for every single person. Yeah, at home, uh, what project-based learning is. But before we start with the definition, uh, I would like to mention a couple of previous uh, definitions of what I could find in the past. So talking about Confucius and Aristotle were early uh, proponents of learning by doing. It means that the students are supposed to learn in the better way if they do something, all right? Moreover, Socrates says that uh, students can learn in the best way when they are questioning, when they are start uh, questioning, inquiring, and working with critical thinking. And as you can see, every single of these elements can be seen in the PVL's classroom nowadays. In addition, John Devy, uh, which is an American educational theorist, uh, started thinking that education is not a preparation for life. Education is life itself. And the last person that I'd like to mention today is Maria Montessori, who said that basically we mm -hmm. learn not by listening to words, but by experiences upon the environment. Well, so when we connect all of these prior or previous definitions, what we can say now is this, that project-based learning basically is an instructional approach where students are engaged in real world problem solving, okay? Based on a project or on a series of different projects, uh, they are required to use different skills, such as researching, writing, interviewing, collaborating, I mean, working in pairs, working in teams, but in order to produce something, to produce what? In order to produce multimedia presentations, documentaries, musical performances, and the most important thing, public speaking. Okay, this is a project-based learning. 
However, when we talk about P, this is the acronym that I'm going to start using. When we talk about uh, project-based learning, we need to understand four different points of view or four different elements that your students are going to develop while they are working on the design of this project. The first one that is called ownership. The students are going to be able to use their own ideas after they have collected the whole information about the project. So they decide the way they, they, they style that they are going to work with while they are working on the project. On the other hand, we have, they are going to develop critical thinking. Yeah. I mean, they are going to start creating their own ideas, their own opinion, Go and of course that. they are going to create um, solutions for real problems. Moreover, your students are going to be able to work as a team. Basically, it means that they can work as in pairs, teams, uh, in your top three, and so on. All right, so this is basically when we talk about collaboration. And the last part, which is called creativity. Uh, activating ideas or creating new ones, okay? So when we talk about PBL, basically we need to try to cover these four different fields. Ownership, critical thinking, collaboration, and creativity, okay? In addition, it's super important to mention that when we talk about PVL, we need to consider seven different elements. So the first one that is called need to know, I'm talking about the students basically. And when we talk about need to know, it means the motivation that your students are going to receive in order to do the project that you are asking them to work with. So it's basically, as you can see on the screen, some kind of entry event to get the students curiosity up and questions going. How you are going to catch your students' attention? That is basically need to know. The second one, it is called driving questions. When we talk about these driving questions, it's basically what is the goal? What is the main objective that we want to get? What we want to achieve? What do we want to reach? after we finish working with this project. And we have really good examples of driving questions because they are going to capture the project's focus. They are really easy to understand the project. And of course, we are going to provide a sense of challenge in our students. The third element, it is called choice. And it's basically your students are able to define, to set, to establish the way or the style how they are going to work with the project. As you can see on the screen, they are, they are going to set their own learning path and a style on which they march down to success. The fourth element is related to next generation skills. And I have a tricky question for you. Is that okay if you don't answer to me? No worries. Can you tell me which are these next generation skills? Okay, let me show you which one they are. Okay, we have this, okay. So that's okay, for this time, no worries. I'm going to uh, keep working on my presentation and then we can share some ideas about it. So as you can see on your left, you will understand that we have four different century skills. The, the first one, which is called critical thinking, that is the ability that the students have in order to find a solution for a specific or real problem, all right? And the number two, we have creativity. We were talking about previously about this, and it's basically how they are going to think outside the box. I was skipping something, by the way. When we talk about critical thinking, we need to try to cover this, uh, the following process. We are going to start asking our students to collect the information. They are going to analyze. We are, they are going to start making concepts. Of course, they are going to work by teams. They are going to create a strategy. And the last thing, they are going to try to find a solution for the problem, which is the main goal. Okay, the number two, basically they activating prior knowledge, new ideas, how they can connect with the new knowledge that they are going to build, and so on. 
Well, the number three basically is, it means working with others. Working as a team. Super important part here because the students need to understand that uh, we are so respectful about the way that they love learning. They love learning, right? So some of them love working with, they are so visual, some are kinesthetic, and so on. But when we talk about PVL, we need to allow our students to decide who they want to work with. That's the most important part. And it's because they need to be a part of the team. In number four, which is the last part of this, is what is called communication. In here, we're going to try to convey ideas. Um, unfortunately, and this is a personal experience that I had, when I started learning English, I was not able to speak. I was really good at grammar, reading, listening, but I was not able to speak. And while it, it was one of the barriers that I used to have years ago. But then when I started exploring everything related to PVL, I just was able to start producing my own ideas, sharing with others, and the result was that at the end of the day, I'm able to speak in English. Okay, now let's, let me keep working with the fifth element, which is called sustain and acquire. Yesterday, Lori, uh, Lorena, one of my partners here in Ecuador, was talking about inquired based learning, which is basically I start uh, making questions about the topic. And here, we are going to allow our students to dive deeper into the subject, and they are going to try to figure out that they are going to find their own way how they are going to uh, develop, uh, develop the project. Okay, the sixth component, it is called authentic feedback and reflection. And what we have here is, uh, we will give an opportunity to our students in order to review their work and the work from others too. So in this way, they are going to start checking information, reviewing, uh, providing feedback between each other and you two as teachers. And the last element that we have in this process, it is called public demonstration. When we ask uh, students to present a project in the class, it's really hard for us to do it in public because when you have 30 or 40 students in the same place, you are going to lose students' attention. However, by using PVL, by working with teams, you are going to allow them to present the product of the whole searching or investigation. So in this case, we have some different kinds of things that you have to, you can do, like speeches, debates, videos, something that we are going to cover later on. And when they are exposed to a public, they will be able to answer questions and of course your students will be able to defend by themselves all right so as you can see we have to take into account these seven different elements in order to talk about project-based learning now on your screen we have a review about what i have already said okay so it's super important to take into account that when we talk about significant uh, significant contents it's basically about the standards that the school has, standards from the Ministry of Education according to your country, all right? On the other hand, we are going to think about the driving questions. And as I told you before, it's basically establishing learning goals, why we want our students to work with this kind of project, okay? In addition, when we talk about driving questions, we are thinking about what is going on at the end, what is the result? of this process, okay? So the third component was a student voice and choice, and basically here, they are going to decide what kind of direction they are going to use in order to learn by themselves. We are trying to motivate in our students autonomous learning. In here also, we are going to cover that, we are going to allow them that the students are the center of the learning. They are going to start working with their required based learning too. And of course, they are going to uh, start discovering different things, right? When we talk about the development of 21st centuries, as I told you before, we have to talk about collaboration. We have to talk about um, 
critical thinking, and so on. And also in here, we need to include the use of the technology. What's super important for us as teachers, we need to be really responsible about that. Why? When we ask our students to work by using technology, we need to explain them what kind of material could be really beneficial for them and which one is not. You know that online we have tons of different information, but they need to recognize the ones that are really good for them and which ones are not. When we talk about inquiry innovation, it's basically about you as instructor. And of course, the result in our students is that learning will feel meaningful. They're going to define concepts and the product, I mean, the, um, the solution for the problem that we are going to set is taking shape. When we talk about feedback and revision, we are thinking about assessment, how we are going to direct the project in the best way students start rethinking about the way that they are working with and how we are going to allow them to succeed during uh, this process. And the last thing, when we talk about public, uh, a public presentation, it's basically about how they are going to face uh, or what is the result facing a real world competence. They are going to demonstrate outcomes. It means I understood this, and I am able to explain it, explain it in this way. And the very last thing, they are going to be able to express or to expose learning ownership, okay? Well, here we have the different char characteristics that we need to take into account as teachers when we talk about PVL. Okay, so on your left or on your screen, basically you have this. We have, uh, sustain inquire, we have public product, critical revision, and so this is basically uh, related to what students are going to do while they are working with the project. But talking about teachers, we need to have an idea about what, are, uh, what is our responsibility before we assign this kind of activity. So I'm going to start saying that we need to have a plan, we need to design it, we need to start thinking about what kind of topic could be fit with the topic that I'm trying to cover in my lessons. What could be the resources, tools, I mean online tools. If uh, it can be adjusted to my planning and so on. In addition, we have to consider if the project that I'm going to allow my students to do is going to be aligned to the standards, not only school standards, but also according to the national curriculum, right? By using these two things, I'm trying to motivate our know, students to build the culture of working with projects. I mean, they are going to start thinking about how they can plan possible solutions for different problems that we have, uh, that we are experiencing nowadays. In addition, we are going to manage the activities. I mean, uh, for instance, the first week of May, students are going to collect the information, and they are going to share it with the team. The second week of March, they are going to present the first draft about the information that they were collecting, and so on, all right? It means that I am going to try to control all of, all of the activities that my students are working on. Of course, these activities, this content, the project is basically uh, focused on what my students are learning in a normal class. It means that I'm going to use scaffolding in here. I mean, I'm going to build new knowledge over what, they, uh, what my students already know. Okay, the next step basically is thinking about how I am going to evaluate the process it is really recommendable to use rubrics to figure out if your students are working with cooperation, if they are presenting the first draft, if they uh, presented uh, all of the, the resources that they use, what they were doing researching, and so on. It is basically how you are going to evaluate this process. And the last but not least important thing 
it is how you are going to keep engaging, how you're going to keep your students motivated. This is the most important part. This is the hardest part. Because um, when you uh, don't motivate your students in order to work with a specific activity, they are going to decide not to do it, basically in simple words, okay? So as you can see, we have to take into account that not only students are going to have uh, an assignment to complete, but also you as teachers in the same way. Seven assignments for students and seven for you too. Okay, now then I have already explained you uh, how a PVL is uh, made of, but also super important to mention which are the steps that you have to take into account in order to plan a project. And here we have four different steps. The first one, I'm sorry, which is basically a start thinking about the whole process. You are going to analyze, you are going to evaluate your students ability, you are going to prepare a scaffolding for building uh, new knowledge, and you are going to break tasks. So it means that you are going to prepare the field in the one that your students are going to work with, okay? And when we talk about breakdown task, it's basically for these, uh, for example, today you have to bring information. In two more days, you are going to uh, bring me a short summary. I'm giving you only one example and so on. So in this way, you can start thinking about how you, your students are going to complete all of the activities. The second key step is basically decide how to launch the project, okay? And when we talk about, when we think about projects, this is basically uh, what is the connection between the project and the uh, standards that we have in our countries and in the national curriculum and also in the uh, school standards too. So everything must be really well connected and so in this way, we are going to try to complete not only the curriculum, but also we are going to incorporate a set of different activities too, okay? And the second part about this, we need to determine our entry event. And when we talk about entry event, is basically what is the motivation that your students are going to have in order to do the project? Something that we were talking about previously. The third element, or the third key step, it is how we are going to gather uh, resources. In this case, and as I told you before, we need to determine technological tools that your students are going to use. Nowadays, we are experiencing this situation, uh, talking about COVID-19, so for this reason, we are supposed to stay at home. And the most important tool that we can use nowadays is internet in order to be connected with our uh, relatives or with our friends and start working on virtual classes and so on. So that's why it's super important to mention what kind of tools can be really useful for our students. YouTube videos, apps, etc. Right? And super important to remember that when we talk about these kind of tools, we need to understand what kind of them are really efficient in order to reach the goal that we want to achieve, right? And the last part here, super important to allow our students to work or to give them the opportunity to investigate or to do some research. And the last step, we are going to draw a storyboard, which means to have a record of all of the activities that my students are working on. As you can see, it's basically a progression bar, or it could be like a flow chart or pictorial representation about the, the activities that my students are working on. Okay, so now I would like to mention something super important when we talk about education and when we talk about learning. And it's basically, uh, I'm going to refer, I'm going to take a couple of minutes in order to talk about Bloom's taxonomy. And later on, I'm going to explain to you why. Uh, 
So as you can see, we have some different levels of comprehension. So the first one at the, at the bottom of this uh, pyramid, we have remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. And I'm going to show you now some of the different characteristics. But when we talk about traditional education, the one that we used to experience many, many years ago, or in some cases and in some countries, uh, traditional education is being designed in the same way as in the past. And taking into account this, it's super important that when we talk about traditional education, they have already worked on remember, understand, and apply. So it means remember, memorize the information, understand, only complete the activity, and apply, do homework, which is really traditional information. So as you can see, when we remember, we're going to recall facts, uh, students are going to explain ideas or concepts, and later on, they are going to use information in new situations. However, when we used, when we include PVL in our planning, in our daily activities, what we are going to motivate in our students is uh, trying to achieve these uh, three different levels, which is analyze. The students are going to be able to draw connections among ideas. They are going to start evaluating the process. I mean, they are going to uh, justify the stand or decision, or they are going to make, uh, they are going to create a solution for a specific situation. And the very, very last thing, which is the top of this pyramid, they are going to be able to create or to produce something new or to have uh, original work, right? So as you can see, we're trying to move on from traditional education to PBL project, PB, PBL, I'm sorry. Uh, my dear teacher, I'm sorry about it. Is that okay if you switch your microphones off, please? Please mute your mix. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, so, well, once again, we're trying to not only uh, work with the same steps as the ones that we have in traditional education, we are trying to motivate our students to analyze, evaluate, and be able to create something new, all right? That's why it's super important to take into account the connection between Bloom, uh, Bloom's taxonomy and PVL. For now, I would like to show you uh, a short video. Well, uh, I'm going to mute this video for this time, but it's basically a summary about what we have covered so far, all right? Okay, when we talk about project-based learning, we are trying to see, to figure out uh, different ways how we are going to capture students' attention, talking about how they are going to solve real problems. And also, we are working with the acronym PVL. Right? This is basically the first part of this. Why we are going to use project-based learning in our classes? This is a tricky question. And let me explain you that we have four reasons. The first one is because we are going to allow to your students to be able to use communication skills, not only to be able to read and write, but also to speak and produce something which is really hard in terms of learning as English as a second language. In addition, they are going to be able to use the 21st century's life skills, something that we were talking about previously, okay, uh, critical thinking, which is uh, one of them, okay. Moreover, your students will be able to work in a collaborative way. They are going to start sharing ideas, not working in an individual way, because what the, the most important thing that we need that your students feel engaged not only with the project, but also working with the rest of their peers or class uh, or classmates. The question number two is, uh, who is supposed or who can use PVL or project-based learning? So I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to say it in this way. All of our students can be included in this project. And we are going to connect the topics that we have in social studies, history, geography, science, art, not only for uh, students who are in secondary, but also for, uh, for students who are in primary school too, right? So every single person can work in different kinds of projects. 
Now, the third question is, how can we implement in our classes? Okay, so the first important thing, we are going to think about the topic. The second thing, we are going to start thinking about driving questions. Driving questions, remember, we are going to have a better idea about the result after students do their research. Number two, we are going to start thinking about the inquiry process, which is basically they are going to have an idea about how they are going to present their project and how it could be the solution, which is the, uh, the part of number three about this process, all right? And the very last thing, the students are going to present everything that they found, exactly, everything that they found in a different context, okay? Here I have a short example, okay, that I would like to show you. I'm sorry. Okay, now, uh, what you can see now is a picture of one of the beautiful beaches here that we have here in Ecuador. It is called Salinas, and it is located in the province of uh, Guayas, right in the south part of Ecuador. This is a really good place, it's so nice, it's an amazing place. When I was there, I fell in love with this uh, place, so I decided to visit it a couple of times. And my question for you, all of you is, please don't worry, you, are not, uh, you can answer, so that's okay. What can you do in a normal, or what can you do when you go to the beach? It could be a, a really easy question to answer, right? Then we can start thinking that we can uh, eat uh, delicious seafood, we can swim at the beach, we can uh, uh, do, uh, go surfing, walk around, and so on. Many different things, right? And I would like you to take a min uh, to take a minute in order to watch this short video, right? Okay, I'm going to make a pause right here. Well, as you can see, we had 10 seconds in the ones that we were able to travel to that place and then you start thinking what kind of activities you can do at the beach. Yes, right? So far, so good. Not a big deal. Now I am going to show you the rest of the video and we'll see what is going to happen, right? This is something that we experienced in one of the beaches uh, last month, all right? And as you can see, it's basically showing water pollution. And it is uh, something that happened in one of the places here, okay? So I'm going to stop my video. I'm so sorry. Okay. And the example is basically this. Okay, the question at the very beginning, I was trying to engage your attention and hopefully I did it. And the question was, what kind of activities can you do at the beach? Then you start traveling by using your imagination. You were trying to focus your attention where Salinas is and so on. All right, but now when I show you the second part of the video, then what you started thinking? The first question could be, what happened in that place? Is water pollution? What could happen with animals? What is people doing around? Okay, so now we are start thinking about uh, many different things. So the example for now is when I say, when I started the video, I wanted to let you to know that the ocean pollution is something that we are experiencing for many years. And I'm trying to uh, motivate my students that they proposed some actions in order to combat it. How we can overcome this situation. Now, what could be the driving question? Okay, I got one simple question in here, which is how is people's life affected at Salinas Beach because of Poor water quality. Okay. 
Now, based on that question, I can start thinking about this and working with inquiry based method too. The next step, which is voice and choice, I am going to ask my students to write a paper and do an oral presentation by using technology in order to be able to, don't forget, to try to uh, say some ideas in order to combat uh, ocean pollution. Don't forget that in, in this section, your students are able to start a, deciding how they are going to work, what kind of thing they are going to work with, and so on. So for this reason, in this section, we have that the students uh, have the opportunity to, uh, to work in teams, they can work with media kits, they can make a public service announcement, they can design a web page, a brochure, or they can write a government a letter for the government, and so on. So, once again, in my case, as teacher, I ask them to do a written paper and an oral presentation by using technology. But the students have the opportunity to uh, work with some different uh, things such as web pages, brochures, letters to the governments, and so on, right? So in here, as you can see, they are going to decide the way that they prefer working with, okay? When we talk about 21st century, I'm going to ask my students to work in a collaborative way. For this reason, they could work in teams of three or four students, right? And they are going to start thinking about what kind of activities they are going to have. So for example, Juan is going to do researching. Maria is going to collect some video information that, uh, can be uh, can, that we find uh, on YouTube and so on. Now, in education and creativity, practice oral presentation skills, and they are going to learn how to make or how to produce videos. And the section related to inquire, we're going to start having or getting more and more questions. So for example, about this, students generate a list of more detailed questions about diseases, bacteria and their effects, sources of water uh, contamination, and so on. In terms of feedback and revision, I'm going to ask my students to, uh, to say some different comments from another team work. It means that they are going to switch the, uh, the research that they have done so far and they can start making some comments about it. Okay, so as you can see, um, I have already included my topic, which is uh, which was really basic. The question was, what do you do at the beach, All right? However, the question, the driving question, in order to motivate in my students to, uh, to say some different or to think about possible solutions was how is people's life affected at Salinas Beach because of poor water quality. All right. Now, these two different points. I have already explained you all of the components of, of, about PVL and also about what is, could be only a project and what is PVL too. So for this reason, I'm going to show you some different characteristics that you have to take into account in order to differentiate both different uh, terms. So when we talk about projects, your students can work by themselves. We talk about project-based learning. It requires collaboration between each others and of course, teacher's guidance. And uh, when we're working with a project, we are thinking about only the result, the final product that we uh, students are going to present. However, when we talk about PVL, we're thinking about the whole process. Step one, remember in the example that I mentioned before, I said the first week of May, they are going to do this, the second do this, the third week, they are going to do this, and the last uh, week of uh, May, it is the result. And when we have a project too, basically it's a teacher uh, all the time saying the directions, the instructions, how students are going to work. 
is basically this. However, when we are working with PVL, students are going to decide the way how they are going to work in the way that they prefer working with. Of course, we are going to guide a little bit, but students are going to direct the whole process. In a project two, they are going to have the same goal, which is basically present the result. On PVL, basically, students are going to make choices and they are going to determine the outcome. I mean, they are going to present what they really understood. In projects, products are submitted to the teacher. But in PVL, the products are presented to an authentic audience. I mean, students are going to uh, need to face a specific audience. I mean, it could be uh, students, or it could be parents too, it depends on. When we talk about also uh, with projects, it's basically that there is a lack of real world relevance. And on the other hand, when we talk about PVL, the students are going to focus their attention or uh, the project is going to be based on real world experience or problems. Okay, so it's super important for us as teachers to understand what kind of activities I'm going to uh, um, assign to my students and what is the real process that I have to, uh, to, to follow. And I have to differentiate project and when this activity is... Okay, I think I'm done. Let me tell you, my name is Wilmer Dumikinga. My email address is uh, wdumikinga at clv.santillana.com. And of course, I'm the academic consultant for Richmond Santillana.